Welcome back to the Stephen Knight Show. I want to thank you for joining us tonight. We have a show full of the hottest topics, everything everyone's talking about. I want to remind you, if you'd rather go watch us, go to our YouTube channel, The Stephen Knight Show. We're all over social media, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and of course, our official website, thestephennightshow.com. Check us out on our uh, TikTok page as well. Family, how are y'all feeling? Y'all doing good? Doing very well. Good, 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 good. I know it's a Monday. We love Mondays. <laughs> Well, our question of the day is, what is something that you've always wanted to do that you haven't done? I ask you, uh, Linnea. I'm not sure. Um, I'm not sure. Um, I, no, no, I don't know. Yeah, I'm not sure. <laughs> okay. Maybe maybe I'll get an idea if I hear what y'all say, but I, I'm not. Nothing jumps out at me. Yeah, I got you. What about you, Chike? Um, uh, I'll name one of the ones that's going to get knocked off the list. The whole horse back on the beach thing. That's going to happen, though. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Mine is I want to go to Europe. I've never been to Europe, so I want to go there. Um, that's that's on my to do list. Then you think of anything? So I've done the horseback on the beach. I've never been to Europe, so I would like to go to Europe. Mm -hmm. um, so I mean, yeah, I was trying to figure out something like you know, but I got something else. All right. I, yeah, no, I got something else. <laughs> <laughs> well, tweet us home. Let us know what's something that you've always wanted to do but you haven't done. All right. Well, another mass shooting in this country. This was Thomas in Louisville, Kentucky, at a bank. Um, it was this morning around eight. 30 a.m. So apparently it was a um, employee. He started off as an intern. He's an employee. He um, he found out he was getting fired. He left a note at home for his parents um, indicating that he was going to shoot up the um, the bank. He live streamed it. Um, this one employee, she was they were in a meeting their um, their morning meeting in a conference room. The one lady, she was um, on Zoom or, you know, whatever video conference. And she said she saw the door bust open. And she said, I literally saw, witnessed people getting murdered. There are four people who killed, um, eight rate ranging from 40 to 64. Um, one of them was friends with the mayor and the governor. Um, there is a police officer. He's only been on job 10 days. I think he was in his 20s. He had just um, completed police academy and he was shot in the head. Um, he did survive, but he had to go to emergency, have emergency brain surgery, um, and he's in critical but stable condition. Um, it's just another, it, you know, this comes on the heels of the gentleman and um, uh, where was this? I know. Tennessee. It. Nashville. Yeah. Nashville, who um, were removed from their positions because they protested on the, on the floor. It was three of them that protested, a white lady and two black men. Of course, the black men were, um, were re released. One of them was actually, um, he was reinstated. voted back, reinstated as an interim. So he has to, he has to when they have a special election, he can run again. Uh, and he they speak, spoke to him and he's the first thing he did was he sent his condolences. That's what he was protesting, these mass shootings. And we all know that the NRA has their hands in the Republican pockets, and this is going to continue to happen. What are your thoughts, um, Chike, when you heard about yet another mass shooting, which I think is we're at over 140 some in this country just this year alone? I, I don't mean to sound trivial about people's lives. I really don't. But they've become normalized. Mm -hmm. And it's sad people are dying yeah and no one this is not something that is of urgency to anyone no one's making any kind of emergency emergency concessions no one's doing anything uh they call emergency meetings for, in congress about lesser things mm -hmm. i mean how far are we going to go like yeah. seriously how far are we going to go Anya, what are your thoughts on this Let's just call a spade a spade. Most of the um, mass shootings that happen are white men. Mm -hmm. 
mostly white young men. I say I'm gonna say between I'm gonna even say like sixteen to maybe forty white. Um, what we have is a failure as a country with you know those in office. I mean, just recently, um, the governor of Florida, um, mm -hmm. signed into law. You know, we I think we talked about that last week. Mm -hmm. You know, with the open the open carry law, you don't have to get checked, and he had the NRA surrounding him during that during that um, signing. Mm -hmm. So we already know, you know, what that entails. That's, you know, those hands breathing each other. Um, and in Texas, um, that governor is, um, I don't know if it's getting ready to do it or trying to pardon a mm -hmm. guy mm -hmm. who decided and put it on social media I want to go kill somebody today because that's what I woke up wanting to do and he decided to uh, run a red light and drive through a, a, a protest or a Black Lives Matter Black protest. Lives Matter press protest there was a there was a now that guy is an army vet mm -hmm. there was also an older gentleman who's an army vet who was actually not army Air Force mm -hmm. general retired open you can carry openly in texas and that man is no longer here yeah and the governor wants to pardon him before he was even yeah. found uh guilty before the um jury even made he their said, proof mm -hmm. he's going he's like like going through i don't know i don't the governor wants to pardon him yeah now so both of them are vets but one is of a vet of a lower lower status and the other is a vet of a higher status who mm -hmm. served way longer for this country and he gets murdered mm -hmm. by someone who decided to wake up and kill somebody yep because that's what he wanted to do and the governor wants to in intervene when have you ever seen a governor they don't even want to stop executions, especially for people who are innocent. And he wants to intervene. Mm -hmm. I can't get no matter. I can't get it's it's selective, you know. We I don't know if we talk about it, selective outrage. Mm -hmm. Um, it's selective BS, because I call BS. Um, and I'm so my boyfriend and I talked about this. You know, the reality of another civil war is right around the corner. They keep saying it. It's not that far. It's not that far fetched. It's really not. It's not that far fetched. And it's scary. Mm -hmm. It is so scary. It's terrifying. And this, um, is, this is happening where it's easier to get guns, easier to. Uh, and, and can I add something onto that about it being easier to get guns? <laughs> My melanated people, please don't fall for the okie doke. Please go through the proper channels to get your firearms. Please get licensed. Have your paperwork. Do everything as if it's law for you to do that. Because do not trust the opposition. Do not trust them. Um, I'm just saying. Definitely. Yeah. Do your due diligence. Let me just say, um, I have had my gun license for over 10 years. Um, and it's something important. I I felt, you know, I felt great going through the process of having my paperwork mm -hmm. legal. Um, and can I just point out when the Black Panthers were carrying AKAs and trying to protect their community, ooh, they passed laws so fast. They sure did. They passed laws so fast when we were out there wanting to protect our communities and we and we had and it was supposed to be that constitutional right to bear arms, not for us. Mm -mm. Not for us. This is only this is only for them. And I'm so tired of people saying, oh, it's not always about black and white. Okay. You keep telling yourself that so you can remain ignorant to the yeah. stuff that's going on. 
I have a family member who tweeted or, or texted us on Friday, just got their eighth gun saying it's getting scary out here. So. Hmm. All right, well, let's switch gears. First of all, our thoughts and prayers with everyone impacted in those uh, communities where these mass shootings are happening. All right, so switching gears, SWV Escape, the Queens of R&B, uh, their um, limited series ended last night. So just a little recap. Um, they had a show on Bravo, um, and there were some things that were that they touched on throughout the, I think it was six episode series. There's drama between the Scott sisters, Tamika and Latasha, um, who are both in Escape. Um, Tamika claims that Latasha's husband stole $30,000 of royalties from her. Um, apparently, uh, Tiny's mom, they found out about this way you could get your royalties after you know the group had kind of, um, their heyday had kind of passed. And so um, everyone was getting, she signed everyone up she was, and everyone was getting their checks. Tamika claims that Latasha's husband um changed the um changed signed it over to her to them and it was going to their account and she found out but she said she didn't want to um press charge because she didn't want to see her sister go to jail well that came up on the show Latasha says she knows nothing about it the husband he talks in circles when they talk about it so that's one thing there's also they found out a promoter they had sent escape text messages about Latasha's husband again between Latasha's husband and the promoter indicating that he was getting kickbacks for shows that he set up for them. So on top of the fee they would get, he gets additional fees. And and this highlight on the text, they confront Latasha on it. She calls her husband. He doesn't want her discussing anything on his behalf. And he talks in circles again when they uh when they when he talked about it on the show. Then when it came down to music, there was a debate on who should be the headliner. Candy thought because her and Tiny have had success outside of their groups and have gone on um, reality TV and, you know, they have big social media platforms that they would bring people to the seats. While SWV says we have sold way more albums than we have the biggest song with Week. Um, and so they decided to end up co-headlining. And then the next um, issue was who's going to have the closing song for the concert. Uh, I said, if you wanted escape, escape, I mean, sorry, what's going to be one week escape wanted understanding. SWV finally gave in and let um, escape have understanding as the last song. And so um, Coco and Latasha were on watch what happens live with Andy Cohen last night. And he said that he thinks weeks should have been, the last song because you can see the audience responds when they were singing it. Everyone was on their feet dancing, singing it, you know. Um, and so Escape, they're promote, they're still performing as a trio. Latasha is not performing with them currently. She's promoting her gospel album, which came out last Friday. SWV just announced they're going on tour with Jodeci and Drew Hill and others this summer. Um, it was supposed to be a tour that they were putting together, but they had a lot of button of head so they just did the show but the show was success and on the show they said they'd do it again but in recent interviews SWV felt a little bit disrespected and they didn't like all the drama because you know SWV used to have their issues too but now they're they they said we get along we put that behind us we're co-workers we realize we make money together um while Escape has a lot of drama they're still working through um and so but but the show was a success for them. They were all excited. Uh, SFV uh, also didn't like how social media was um, targeting them online following episodes. They didn't like all that. So did any of you watch it? And what were your thoughts on some of these topics? I watched it. I thought it was entertaining. Um, <clears throat> again, another show where, you know, reality comes back to bite people in the behind. Mm -hmm. um, I, I had a thought uh, after watching the last episode, something came to me. And this is just a thought. I'm not accusing anyone of anything. It's just a thought. Um, Tasha's husband used to work for R. Kelly. Didn't mm -hmm. R. Kelly say some stuff about people who were stealing him from him? Mm -hmm. hmm. And he's not working for R. Kelly anymore, but now he's over here and people are saying that he stole from them. That's interesting to me. Mm -hmm. It's something to think about. I'm not saying that the man did it. I'm just 
But Thank you. the thing with Latasha, she talks in circles when she's being confronted about anything or trying to explain anything. She even came out with some um, social media videos where she's kind of talking in circles and crying. And she said that in one of the videos that her and her husband had an open, uh, open marriage. Mm -hmm. um, but last night on Watch What Happened, she said she meant we have open communication. He doesn't have that, that easy. You know, they don't have open marriage. And people are That's what happens when you don't have a PR person to help you talk through your message. You saw them people share with her. Someone need to be on PR. <laughs> no one's on PR. What are your thoughts, um, Lanier, when it comes to who do you do you agree with Tiny and Candy that they're the ones that are bring people to the seats, um, even though SWV has um, sold more albums? So I am not a reality TV fan. Mm -hmm. um, I would have preferred for them sisters not to do this because there's going to be an antagonist and a pro, um, protagonist um, yeah. when it comes to that. And I love SWV. I mean, I like the state, but I love SWV. Mm -hmm. um, you tell me a, a show is happening. I'm going for SWV. I'm just being honest. Um, what I what I've seen on social media, it just seems like you know, Candy and Tiny love drama, mm. and they're banking on that drama. You know what I mean? Um, when it comes to doing these shows, that's this is just my opinion. Mm -hmm. Um, when it comes to doing these shows, but um, I just. I, I know that it opened up another door for SWV, even even with the negative, um, you know, the negative, you know, blowback from it mm -hmm. that they felt like they were receiving, you know, when they did versus, you know, that opened up another portal mm -hmm. for people to know who they are because they were the it group back in the day. Yeah. Just like, you know, um, Escape was. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I... I Oh, I'm happy that they're going on tour, and I, I mean, I don't know what Jodeci looking like now. That used to be one of my favorite groups. And actually, it's all the members of Jodeci are going on all tour. All of them, all that's of them, true. and then Drew Hill. Drew Hill. But that's just like with Drew, with Jodeci and Drew Hill. I'm Jodeci all day, and I love Drew Hill, but Jodeci mm. all day because I had a thing for Devontae and Swain. But <laughs> that's beside the point. That's beside the point. I, and you all, know, I. I I feel like everybody that we came up with the music that we listened to, they deserve they deserve a part of this this um they deserve to eat mm -hmm. because of this internet thing. Just yeah. like these people who really didn't put in no work. Let's let's call it what it is. You know, these people are on the internet and they they're getting, you know, you have all these followers, but did you put in the work? Right. Yeah. So yeah, and um, but I will say I think the show did benefit both groups, especially SWV, because they weren't really on social media. You know, they are on there, but you know, not going back yeah. and forth with people. But people are now. I see them on so many shows. I'm on um, Jennifer Hudson show. So I'm on Sherry Shepard show. But, you know, Coco was on Watch What Happens last night. Um, you see them being out there more, and I'm glad that they did. Even though there was a lot of drama on the show, I'm glad they did do a lot of focus on the music. Like when they would talk about music or even in the concert, they would, you know, put what song it was and how it charted and things like that. Because both of them are very talented and they both sound and look really good. So, but yeah. It makes, it makes you look forward to um, R&B Diva. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Well, here's a feel good story. So talk about karma, good karma. A Florida woman uh, mother won $2 million lotto prize one the one day after her daughter completed her last uh, cancer treatment. Port of Lottery shared the heartwarming uh, story via press release on last this past Friday. The winner, Geraldine Gambit, uh, took home a one-time lump sum payment of $1,645,000 with, with, uh, per the release. Her winnings were the result of a bonus cash word scratch-off game. Now, she claimed her prize um, at the Lotto he uh, headquarters in Tallahassee with her daughter and a granddaughter by her side. In tears, her daughter explained the significance of the money and how 
um, the day before. She said the day before my mom bought this ticket, I rang the bell and walked out of the hospital after completing my last treatment of brain, uh, breast cancer. My mom had taken out her life savings to take care of me when I was sick. I'm just so happy for her. Now, it turns out that she liked playing this particular um, lottery game and she would go, she went to go and they, the owner told her, the owner of the store said, we don't have any more. And so she just asked him, can you just double check? And he had one last uh, ticket and that's where she won. And the store um, walked out because they get uh, $2,000 as a bonus commission. So apparently, according to Florida Lottery, the scratch-off game that she purchased cost $10. It has been in rotation since May of 2022 and features eight prizes of $2 million and 20 prizes of $100,000. Floridians have been cashing out with lottery prizes since 1988 per their release more than 3,500 people have been, become millionaires from winning the lottery prizes. They've awarded over $85.8 billion, with a B, in prize money since that date. Don't you like when good things happen to good people or people that do good deeds? Chica, what do you thought when you, um, when you hear this story? Oh, that's my wheelhouse. I love when good things happen to good people. Yeah. I believe in uh, positive energy and good karma and all that. Yeah. And it seems like the Lord was working and the Lord swooped down right on time. Mm-hmm. And Lenny, I don't know if you're like me. I love unexpected money. <laughs> what, what, what are your thoughts? <laughs> I found $20 last week. Uh. <laughs> I, the one thing that I will say is that um, I wish that there there was an option to remain anonymous because with that when people know who you are Mm -hmm. um you know it it brings it brings out a different animal yeah and it puts you it puts you in danger um you know i know me you know if i won a lottery let me find me a good attorney right i ain't saying nothing Mm -hmm. i ain't getting on tv you ain't taking no picture of me I'm going to be like the dude in Jamaica that showed up in the dream say, mouth. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. You, he covered up his hands and everything. Yep. Like, so you wouldn't even be able to distinguish absolutely positively nothing about him. Uh-huh. Um, because, you know, even though it's a godsend for them, them vultures is circling. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And and you just, you want them to be safe. Right. And I feel like when they when people don't have that option, you're actually putting them in danger mm-hmm. um, of the vultures. But, you know, God bless her daughter. You yeah. know what I mean? Because that, that first and foremost is the most important thing. God bless her for, you know, that journey of her life mm-hmm. and her getting through that and moving forward. Because most likely they got a lot of, um, what do you call it, medical bills, medical bills. relating to that because a lot of insurances don't cover everything. Mm-hmm. Especially something so detrimental to your life. So Absolutely. Crucial. So Absolutely. God bless all of all of them. Yes. And I remember I saw um years ago I saw this um documentary on people who had won the lottery before and how sometimes it, it took a horrible toll on their lives. Um so but congratulations to them and hopefully it works out in their favor. Take a quick commercial break. Find out why another a Florida teacher he was fired by asking students to write their own obituaries. Then the Dalai Lama, he's having to apologize after what some people call a pedophile act. Right back after this.